I am just uh, delighted to be here, and um, I wanted to thank the board of directors and, and Carrie for uh, inviting me. Um, I've had a, this has been a, a really special conference. I've been, I am absolutely obsessed with light sensitivity. I've been obsessed with this for the past year or two. What's interesting is what causes light sensitivity. What causes it? We don't know. We sort of know. But if you, I've asked some of my most brilliant op, you know, friends, Stanford and other places, and I said, why is it that when you shine light in somebody who has a corneal abrasion, why does that hurt? Why does that hurt? Does anybody, you know? Why does it hurt when, you, when somebody has uveitis? Well, my friend says, well, because the iris, the iris is irritated, you know, and you shine light and it causes the iris to move. Mm, I'm not sure that that's actually correct. It might, be, it might be part of it. Why is it that when you have, why is it that low vision patients have photosensitivity, right? Why do dry eye patients have photosensitivity? So what, what causes light sensitivity? And we're gonna talk a little bit about this. This is a, an incredibly interesting area, an area that I think is gonna become more and more important as we, as we move on. Oh, by the way, the reason why we, we, we know why we do have light, we know why from a, big, from a big picture standpoint, we know why we have light sensitivity, it's so that you don't look at the sun, okay? We had a lot of that, and you know, I was, I was preparing for the worst when we had the solar eclipse, right? In California, it went right pretty close to where we were, and, um, and it was amazing. I, I just, I told, I was, that was one of the days, like, we might be open for a long time. It was amazing. The public had a really good understanding of not to look at the sun uh, directly. Um, but there are some people who do look at the sun. They get a central scotoma, and as you've probably seen, you actually just you totally uh, obliterate the central phobia. Okay, and I actually had a patient, I actually had a patient who, who sadly did this, not this last time, but a couple years ago, and I actually did get an OCT on him, which is hard to get, it's hard to get an OCT in the active phase, but you actually get a lot, of, it's like you don't actually see the scar tissue in the early phase of solar retinopathy, um, you, you see more like edema. So it's pretty, it was pretty sad. He ended up about 2030, ultimately, which was an, a total disaster. But this is why we, why our bodies and why as humans we got into this situation where we started having, um, where we, uh, you know, basically have light sensitivity because we, we, it, it's another pain response. I'm going to shift my body over here. I, I just realized I've been focusing on this part of the audience because it's, it's my tennis when I play, I'm usually looking at the left. Okay, so then, um, so this is a really cool slide and this came from a, a, a paper actually called Shedding Light on Photophobia. Has I actually have this, this exact slide blown up large in my office and I talk to my patients about it because it's such an important aspect of, of pain. So, so why do we have pain? Well, it turns out light activates, um, light from the eye activates pain circuits and guess where it activates it? Trigeminal ganglion. I mean, this is stuff that I really, I didn't know this stuff until pretty recently so it's not like you know, I mean, a lot of people didn't. This paper came out just recently, by the way. I'm gonna give you a really good tip about light sensitivity uh, and lenses. So there it turns out there are three pathways by which light can actually cause pain. So number one, it can go through conventional rods and cones where it goes out the optic nerve, but it doesn't go right to the trigeminal ganglion. The thought is, this is kind of neat, the thought is that the, that the when you have light, it actually goes through the pretectal nucleus, then it goes back, and then the supercellular nucleus actually then sends efferents back to the globe. So it comes, so light that goes through the classic visual patterning pathway goes out, then comes back, and irritates blood vessels, they think. Blood vessels in and around the eye, and around the structure of the eye. The blood vessels all have, or uh, the blood vessels all have receptors, and then these receptors from the blood vessels then goes to the trigeminal ganglion. So it's kind of a backward way. So that's the first way that we think, that's what we think is the conventional rod, and we think that's actually a, a, not a prominent part of why people have photophobia. Now number two, this is really cool. There is a cell, it represents, and I'll, a little bit later, it's about point, it's not even 1%, even less than 1% of the retina. It's called the IPRGC. And this is your melanopsin cell. You, everybody knows about this because this is things that help light entrainment and so forth. So, but what's really interesting is, but this, this, it's called an intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cell, the retinal ganglion cell. And this cell sits in the retina, okay? It receives, inf it, it receives input from rods and cones, just like the other retinal ganglion cells, but guess what? 
it decided, I'm going to skip the entire, op you know, I'm going to skip the whole entire pathway of vision. And it goes, it does go through the optic nerve, but it goes right to the thalamus. And the thalamus is an area of where we have pain. So all the, tr and what I mentioned earlier is the trigeminal ganglion goes to the thalamus. And then the thalamus goes to the, to the somatosaurus cancer. By the way, guys, what also goes to the trigeminal ganglion? The scalp. Where do we have pain when we get a headache? It's, that's where it is, over and over. Okay, so the other, so the IPRGC sends signals to the thalamus directly. And by the way, uh, and I'll mention this in a second, you should now sort of get an understanding of why people who have headaches also experience eye pain. So the third way, and this is a cool one, the, the body decided light sensitivity is so important and photosensitivity is so important because we don't want people looking at eclipses. It's so important that we're going to do a pathway that doesn't even go through the optic nerve. And there are IPRGC cells in your iris that actually goes outside, doesn't even go through the optic nerve. It said, feh, I don't want to go through the optic nerve. I want another pathway. And so there's a very interesting, there's, uh, uh, there's a lot of studies which show that you know, sort of blind people can actually still see. And people have had transection of the optic nerve. Actually, they can't see, but they can perceive light. And they thought that these people were, you know, basically not, not you know, being honest or, you know, secondary gain, whatever. But absolutely, this is a, this is a real phenomenon. Okay. More. Um, the, I, what I really want to take, the take-home message really is that photophobia, okay, is basically pain. Light is just another pain fiber can be another pain fiber, okay? But there's still a big disconnect between why you're light sensitive with, um, with corneal irritation or anything else, and I'll get to that. The firing rate of the, the, gangl the ganglion cells, the neurons actually, in the trigeminal ganglion is, ex is increased on light exposure, okay? Um, just to any light. Okay, so, so what you can do is you can record from that area and you know that. Now, what's interesting is if you inject lidocaine into the globe, not that you'd want to, but if you inject lidocaine into the globe, um, you can get rid of the light response, the light photophobia. However, you can also get rid of it by injecting right into the trigeminal ganglion. So if you take lidocaine and you numb up the trigeminal ganglion, you can knock out this response, okay? But you need, um, uh, you need trigeminal neuron. You, you, if, you, if, you, if you don't knock out the trigeminal ganglion, um, or the, both, I should say that you need both intraocular afferents from the globe and the trigeminal ganglion to get this response. Now, one thing that's really interesting here is that photooculodynia, okay, describes discomfort in the eye from a light source that is not usually painful. And that's something that, that, we're, we're, gonna, that we're gonna get into, and that's really a complicated area. And I think that's an area that I can't give you specific uh, answers to. So what, do you, what, do you, what is the most important thing to take home? That photophobia is, is a, there's a photophobia transducer in the eye, and that is the IPRGC. And as they're about, oh, I, I see it, it's about 0.2% and 0.8% of the ganglion cells. Now, what's interesting is unlike most ganglion cells, they go, as I said, they go in a different, um, a different pathway. Now, what's, you know what's really fascinating? Then in diseases like optic neuropathy and glaucoma and possibly retinal disease, they're preferentially saved. Of course, right? Why would you, why would, why would that, you know, why would you, it, the body is just, it's like a painful trick. You're going blind and yet the, the neurons that, you know, and the cells that actually are the pain fibers that causes you pain, they, they stay around. I can understand why from a, from a pathophysiology, why you'd want not to remove the pain okay, in these diseases, but it's, it's interesting that they are preferentially saved. Yes? Yeah, sorry about that. That's, a, that's actually a typo. That's a reference to that number. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 0.2% and 0.8% to, to, to that amount. Yeah, yeah, it's a very low number. Okay. We're going to stop just for a second, take a quick... So conditions associated with photophobia. If you do chart reviews, you find that the majority of people who have photophobia is from dry eye, by and far, like, like absolutely 
uh, uh, unbelievable in number. And then the other one that most common is, is migraine. So we're gonna get into that. But you can see some of the conditions that cause photophobia, everything from uveitis, iritis, conjunctivitis, dry eyes, uh, pterygium, corneal, other corneal diseases, and then interestingly enough, photoreceptor diseases, okay? Optic nerve, optic neuritis, chiasmal stuff, which is really fascinating, and uh, even in the brain, okay? So we know that that is, um, we know that that's a, a big deal. One of the questions is, we, in the posterior segment, we have posterior segment diseases such as retinal dystrophies, retinal pigmentosa, cone dystrophies, and they also are associated with photophobia. Now that makes, that is a very hard thing to explain. I think I can, exp I, and part of my research is actually why that is. Photophobia may also, what's interesting about photophobia and why you shouldn't ignore it, is it may be one of the earliest signs of cone dystrophy before vision loss. And so it's fascinating that, that that's something that can happen. And we, and we do know that the retina is insensate. So there aren't too many, there aren't any particular uh, uh, nerve cells that are in the retina itself. Now the blood vessels surrounding it, there are. Um, and then I kind of touched on this already that you, you don't need, you don't actually need um, to have vision to have, um, uh, to have uh, some of the photosensitivity. Okay, now what, the, some of the experiments that were really interesting is that you can actually transect the optic nerve and you can still get light sensitivity. So that's something that's just very interesting and something that, again, sheds light on, on some of the mechanisms, okay? And this was a, a beautiful study actually that was done by uh, this group down here where they, they basically took an animal and they, they looked at the light response with and without transection of the optic nerve. And you can actually see the light response um, is almost identical when they transect the optic nerve. And this is probably because the, 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 iris, the, the cells in the iris, the intrinsically photosensitive, photo, photosensitive retinal ganglion cells in the iris actually go right to the thalamus. Okay, we got through that. So they've actually done some really interesting studies. They, you know, one of the questions is how do you do these, how do you do these studies? Well, a lot of times you can, you, you can do tracer where you inject uh, you know, molecules into the, the retinal cells and then watch how they retrograde, go back to the trigeminal ganglion. And that's one way you can figure out that the tri, or into the cornea. But the other thing you can do is functional MRI activation, uh, functional MRI imaging, which is a really interesting area. And FR, fMRI, um, is a, is a, they've done that a lot with um, people in photophobic states. They've done it with migrant, migrainers, and they've done it with other things. So there's a lot of neurobiology that's been done with that, and it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty well worked out. Okay. 